guys, today I'm going to review Star Trek, this side of paradise. I was one of the first to find them, the spores. Spores? Star Trek, this side of paradise was broadcast on March the 2nd, 1967. It's from season 1, episode 24. It was directed by Ralph Sineski, written by DC Fotana and Nathan Butler. Nathan Butler was a pseudonym for Jerry Soule. He had his name replaced to Nathan Butler because of a rewrite of the script. It was originally going to be called The Way of the Spores. The title for This Side of Paradise was taken from a poem by Rupert Brooke, and also the title was taken from a 1920 novel by Scott Fritz Gerald. The episode runs 49 minutes and is highly regarded among fans. The episode stars William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly, George Takir, Nichelle Nichols, and guest stars Jill Ireland as Leila. So this is another good episode of the original show, Star Trek. When Kirk's given the task of seeking out survivors on a planet which has been exposed to deadly rays, Kirk is astonished to find everyone in perfect health on the planet and they're still alive. However, not everything is quite how it seems. So these strange plants are on this planet and they squirt out these petals at people and they become under the control. So the episode reminds me a little bit of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, where people are transformed into these mindless beings that are under control of an alien intelligence. And it's also an episode that showcases Lennon Nimoy as Spock. It's all about his character because he, he gets under control of these flowers and he becomes emotional. I love you. I love you. And it's also a romance story that featured a lot in Star Trek that did a lot of romance stories. Stories such as City on the Edge of Forever, Paradise Syndrome, All Our Yesterdays, The World is Hollow and I Have Touched the Sky. And the reason the original show seemed to do romantic stories at times is because Star Trek's all about the human condition about being human and about humanity. And shows also did showcase episodes of different characters so the, they could build on a certain character at times. And in this episode, it's all about Spock. He falls in love with Jill Island's character, Layla. And Jill Island would later be married to Charles Bronson. So both her and Leonard Nimoy are excellent in this episode. Mr. Spock and I have met before. In a long time. Hey Phil, she's hot. I know what Spock was after. Another thing I like about this episode is it's filmed on location. So it's outside filming. So episodes done on location are far more better than the studio bound episodes, which they're done to save money, whereas location filming costs more. But for me, a massive bonus in this episode's the music. And you get familiar music that's in other episodes, like the romantic theme. But in this one, you hear more of it. It's like a longer stretch of music. And it's done to great effect. Compare it to the spin-off series that were done. Especially in The Next Generation. Really bland music in them spin-off shows. But the original, it's far better. And that's one of the main reasons why I like the original show more than the spin-offs. We even say the character is solo on location. So he got off the ship and it's nice to see him because he's probably the most underused character. Hey Phil, I heard that Shatner and George Takei didn't get on well together. Shatner said he didn't know the fucker. Yeah, they were both famous for not liking each other. I don't have any animus towards him. I don't know who he is. I don't know, do not know. I want you to hear me. I, hear I do not know who George Takei is. Oh my. <laughs> Forrest Kelly's his usual great self as well in this episode, playing the character of Bones. Eh? I'm not in the bugger. There's some great standout moments in this episode. Brilliant seeing Leonard Nimoy with emotions as Spock, where he's hanging off a tree and he's in love. Really funny the bit where he ignores Kirk's orders. Shatner's good as well. Especially the scene where he's on the ship alone. He's the only character who hasn't been overcome by these plants. 
great moment where he's just sat in his chair alone. Captain's log, stardate 3417.7. Except for myself, all crew personnel have transported to the surface of the planet. Then Kirk realises that to stop the effect of the plants, you have to get angry. He gets Spock to come onto the ship and he insults them. Disloyal to the core, rotten like the rest of your subhuman race, and you've got the gall to make love to that girl. That's enough. Hey, Phil, I bet you didn't know there was a line cut out. One of Kirk's insults would have got the episode banned. Is that right, Bones? What was the line he used? Yeah, it would have got banned, Phil. The line Kirk was going to say is, Spocky punk your day, you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't believe that, Bones. He made it up. There's also a sad scene when Spock gets put right. He tells Leela about his being cured. There's like a really sad speech between them both. I love you. I said that six years ago and I can't seem to stop repeating myself. I, I can't lose you now, Mr. Spock. I can't. I have a responsibility to this ship. And the last moment where Spock's on the ship and the episode ends and he says for the first time in his life he was happy. So it's a really emotional episode this where all the regulars are on top form. You can kind of look at it as though it's an anti-drug episode where these people think they're alright because the plant's given them a false happiness. So it's an anti-drug story. So out of 10, I thought it was brilliant, this one. I'd give this one top marks, 10. 10 out of 10. What to do, Phil? Go on to do, like it. I thought it was an excellent episode, Phil. Top marks. This show is better than the bloody spin-offs they do. They're crap compared to the original show. Okay, everybody, bye. Let's subscribe and share. Bye. first time in my life, I was happy.